All right, in my last video, I said I was changing the scope of my channel to be more about my creativity, of stuff that I was running to write, stories I've been wanting to work on, books and short stories and everything. I'm going to focus on short stories first to do some world building and to you know work out some ideas for the the, the larger longer form novels that I'm wanting to write and I'm going to go over some of the lore for the first series that I'm wanting to work on I've got two uh, that I've got just in the in my head right now that I am working on one is sci-fi more sci-fi fantasy has a little bit of a HP Lovecraft edge to it, a little cosmic horror edge to it. I think Star Wars meets Event Horizon. Something like that. But this is the more of the fantasy horror side. This is more um World of Darkness meets Buffy meets Supernatural that sort of side and one of the, the key features of this fantasy horror side is this ancient Cold War that has been raged between two large factions that are made up of these different groups working together. One side is a faction that has been pro-human, that has been protecting humanity, and the other is a side is a faction that's been against humanity, that's been fighting against the alliance that's been working and protecting the human race. Humanity is basically screwed if we didn't have allies in this universe. We are utterly powerless to fight back against the enemy that wants to destroy us. Our technology won't be much of a threat to them. They're magical based beings, so our guns and bombs and even our nuclear weapons, they'll just shrug them off. You know, I mean, there are creatures where you, you, you vaporize them with a nuke and they'll just regenerate. And they are that dangerous, that powerful, and humanity has absolutely no chance whatsoever in a fight against them without the allies protecting them. And in this universe, it's in set in modern, it's the story will be set in more uh, somewhat recent modern time. The first short story you're writing will actually be set in World War II. Well, actually be set in World War II as a setting, but the government of the world will know of the existence of these two factions and will actually be working with the pro-human faction in secret. So the two factions, the two primary factions are the Dark Light Alliance and the Shadow Covenant. I may change those names in the future. I think I might make that, make the anti-human faction the Infernal Covenant because of the, the, the primary force that governs that particular faction. And there's a lot of lore behind that one. I've got a ton of lore behind them. Uh, the Dark Light Alliance is comprised of several separate groups. You have the library, which is comprised of mostly magic users, particularly sorcerers. Then you have the Order of the Crimson Circle, which are vampires. You have the outcasts, which are demons that have been ostracized from a regular demon society in the void and are now living on Earth. Uh, disguised as humans. Uh, there's one other faction. There are the fairies of Glenmora, 
that is another faction. There is a neutral faction, which are the primordial, or otherwise known as royal vampires, which may get uh, roped into the fight at some point. And then you have the Infernal Covenant, which is led by the Infernals. I should probably, so you understand exactly who these things are, I should probably go and start from the beginning then. Um, none of this is going to be major spoilers for the story, because this is all just backstory to explain who the hell these groups are and why they're motivated in the way that the way that they're motivated to, to fight one another. So the the Infernals, who are the head of the Infernal Covenant, they were the original masters of Earth. They were the first inhabitants of the Earth. Humanity wasn't originally here. Now, Celestials, uh, the gods, basically brought humans here to Earth a very long time ago. Much further back than science believes that humanity existed on Earth. Nearly a million years. And they bring them here and they discover that the Infernals are dying. They have this plague that's killing them off. Their women are infertile. And so they make this deal with the leader of the Infernals, Lucifer. They make a deal with him. They will cure them of their curse and make their women fertile again of their of, of their illness. They'll make them fertile again if they agree to let this fledgling race of sentient beings live with them in peace. And so they leave them there. The Celestials leave them there on, on Earth, which the Infernals called Eden, and leave. And there's peace for a time on Eden between these fledgling beings, early humans, and the Infernals. At some point, someone on the side of the Infernals discovers that their kind can feed off of dark human emotions. That they can extract strength and power by feeding on dark emotions from humans. And Lucifer sets up this plan to um, this psyop plan to turn humans against one another. And so over centuries human civilization that's been living side by side with the infernals starts to break down and eventually it culminates into the point where humanity is basically subjugated by the infernals and they live in just torture and torment just so the infernals can feed off their energy and it is changing the infernals it is making them evolve faster than they would normally evolve and they're getting stronger and they're gaining new powers and abilities from feeding on all of this negative emotional energy from, from humanity. Well, a thousand years pass passes. The Celestials return to check up on the progress of the beings that they left on Eden and they see what uh, Lucifer has done. They see what has happened and they fight the Infernals. And Lucifer and his people think, oh, hey, we've gained strength and power from all this energy we've been absorbing from these beings, these humans. We can fight the Celestials now on an even footing. And so they try to fight them. And they get their asses handed to them. The Celestials beat them. And as a result, the Infernals are expelled from Eden and sent into the void. And the void is sort of, sort of this universe's version of the abyss. Uh, think of it, the D and D abyss, or um, Oblivion from Elder Scrolls. It's sort of that, this universe's version of that. And so they're expelled into it. Lucifer is cursed, so that he can never return to Eden. 
and he is cast out. And so the whole story of Adam and Eve getting cast out of Eden was not actually of humanity. It was of Lucifer and his people getting cast out from Eden. And so the earth falls to humanity and the human race does what it does, evolves, grows, builds civilizations, civilizations rise, civilizations fall. And for a time, you know, they are do their thing and they rebuild from what has been happening to them over a thousand years. The groups that form the faction of the Dark Light Alliance begin to surface with some of the civilizations that come a few thousand years or, or tens of thousands of years after Lucifer and his people are expelled from Earth or from, from Eden and the world later called Earth. You have the first group, which is the library. And so you have a sorcerer named Merlin who establishes the first library. And the purpose of the library was he saw, he saw that civilizations rise and fall and a lot of their knowledge is lost when this happens. So they tried to preserve as much knowledge from fallen civilizations as much as they can so that they can make the fall not quite so traumatic for humanity so that they can help humanity come back from every collapse of civilization and of course they they're all sorcerers so they use their magical abilities to to also try to protect humanity from the forces that would want to, to try and destroy them And at some point later on down the line, uh, there's another civilization builds up and their mages, they have discover magic. Their mages learn how to combine magic and technology and a techno mage from that time named Kane begins experimenting with um, this chaotic magic that comes from the multiverse and if you are not strong strong willed enough to handle this it can corrupt you it can destroy you and he what he's trying to control this power and it is just taking control of him his sister abel tries to stop it they fight one another and she ends up getting killed. A part of Cain that is still somewhat sane, still somewhat human, sees what he's done to his beloved sister and he loses it and he destroys um, his civilization. He unleashes his power and it obliterates his civilization. This is, the, this is how the story of the fall of Atlantis happens. And this is where the biblical story of Cain and Abel come from um, in this universe. Abel was a girl and Cain uh, survived and he was transformed and became the first blood lord, the first of the demigod vampire race. Um, and so he is one of the other factions. The outcasts are demons who were exiled from the void by Lucifer and his people. These are demons that either came to Earth and fell in love with humans or decided to side with humanity and were cast out, ostracized by the infernal lords in the void. And their home in the void is the 80th plane called Pandemonium where they live and it sort of looks like your classical look of what hell would look like you know lava pits and dark skies and everything and so the outcasts side with humanity and eventually merlin 
negotiates with these groups and they form a faction that works to protect humanity from the forces on this other side that wants to bring down human civilization and take the earth back for the infernals and so that's the lore i'm 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 skipping over a lot so i don't want to spoil a lot of things and the, the short stories are going to be doing a lot of the world building for this there's going to be significantly more detail there's there is so much more to this that i'm not telling you yet um in this but this is just the beginnings of it of this this cold war between these two forces that are that have been protecting and trying to fight against humanity for tens of thousands of years so again this is a this is a short video i'm probably going to do a much more extensive lore video uh in the near future uh for this universe maybe cover the lore of every individual faction in much greater detail uh let me know in the uh in the um comments below you know if you want to see a much more in-depth um lore video on each faction on the on the two groups on the individual groups that make up each faction let me know if you want more in-depth information and there's there is a even a bigger backstory behind all of that that goes all the way back to the creation of the universe i i've i've mapped out all this stuff already in my head but i've got to finally write this stuff down um, to, to finalize it and it's huge i mean what i what i've dreamed up for this universe is massive so let me know what you think and um let me know what kind of videos you want to see about this and i'll i'll come back and make them for you anyway Thank you for watching. I am Mike Desorch. Um, you may have noticed that the camera's a little different. I'm using my old webcam right now. I'm putting a lot of miles on my cell phone using it as a webcam. So I've decided not to do that anymore. I'm just using this old crappy Logitech camera for right now. I hate this camera. I I've tried to position it in places where it would get a better view. I absolutely despise it, but um, I need to get a better one. There's we 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 have a brand new one for the server in there. They there is a better Logitech camera in there. I gotta get Tigra and um, have him fish it out for me to see if I can use it in here. Cause we've got an Elgato camera in there to use in there, which he wants to use for his his stuff when he does his music stuff in there. But, um, yeah, there's a better Logitech camera in there. And I don't want to put any more miles on my phone. I mean, it's my only phone that I have right now, and we can't really afford to buy a new one. So, uh, I think I will use it for recording videos when I'm not here at my desk. If I'm, like, moving around the house, because it works via Wi-Fi. So I can record anywhere with it. So I think that's how I will use it in the future is instead of here at my desk um, with it, I'll use the webcam here at my desk, but I'll use the phone when I'm not, when I'm just walking around the house. And I'll have to get me a um, a good a good mic. Um, probably, um, I'll probably use like the headphones that came with the with the phone. It has a really good mic on, on them. I'll probably use that. Anyway, I'm rambling. <laughs> I tend to do that. Thanks for watching. I have been Mike Desorch. This is um This is new. This is different. 
anyway thanks for watching and um again put those comments down there let me know what you think uh, let me know what factions you want to hear about what more lore you want to hear about and um and then i will see you next time are you tired of reading articles written by activists pretending to be video game journalists well so are we visit www.zorkcentral.com for weekly blogs about video games just video game journalism the way it was meant to be not lectures visit www.zortcentral.com